Welcome to everyone. Good afternoon to all. Magandang hapon sa lahat. Sa New City Press Philippines welcomes you to this very ever first episode of New City Kumustahan. First of all, I wish to warmly welcome our three distinguished speakers this afternoon. Mr. Eric Janyayan from Puerto Princesa, Palawan, and then Attorney Maria Lisa Miscalayorda from Tacloban City, and our very own Bishop Jerry Alminasa from the Diocese of San Carlos. Our three guests this afternoon will be joined by three energetic youth leaders, Jupe Miranda from uh, Dumaguete City, Chinky Palladio from Masbate City, and of course, from the city of Las Piñas, Gio Francisco. Welcome to each one of you. In a while, we will get to know them better. Of course, we also welcome our new city friends who are with us this afternoon in the Zoom virtual conference room, and all those who are following the live transmission via our FB New City Press page, okay? Just a brief introduction to this first ever new city, Kumustahan. This whole idea came as a desire to, to spend a moment with our New City Achievement Awardees and to make Kumustahan in order to share their inspiring adventure, especially in this time of pandemic to our New City friends. So this is not a formal webinar, but it would like to be a moment of family gathering. Kung saan pwedeng magkwentuhan. Let's imagine we are all together sa isang sala and we are sharing with each other our adventure. Diba ang sarap ng pakiramdam? So this is what we would like to have this afternoon. Perhaps some of those who are following the live transmission may ask kung ano ang new city. Kaya importante din na i-present natin kahit briefly lang sa pamamagitan ng isang video clip. Pero bago natin panuori dito, let me say just a few words. New City Press Philippines is one of the more than 20 publishing houses of the Focolare movement spread all over the world. It is the home of the Focolare publication in the Philippines. New City Press Philippines is established here in Manila in 1966 as the English edition of the Italian Cita Nuova for Southeast Asia. New City Press Philippines publishes on a variety, publishes books, on a variety of topics and a full color monthly magazine, the New City Magazine. In publishing its books and magazine, New City Press Philippines aims at offering a view of the world from the perspective of unity. That unity that Jesus prayed for to the Father, may they all be one, taken from the Gospel of St. John chapter 17, verse 20, 21, rather. New City Press Philippines, through the New City Magazine has been awarded for its contribution in promoting interreligious dialogue by local and international media commissions like the Catholic Mass Media Award, CMMA in the Philippines, and the International Christian Organizations of Media, or ICOM, based in Geneva, Switzerland. In fact, already we received the ICOM Award twice for our work in interreligious dialogue. So let's watch this short video clip on what is New City. Are you tired of the anger in today's society? Of the divide that's hard to mend? Well, don't worry, you're not alone. Because there are so many people out there who are actually working to help make humanity closer. And we at New City Press Philippines offer a platform for true dialogue. The Focolari movement founded by Kara Lubick inspires the work of New City in promoting the unity of the human family. As Jesus prayed, Father, may all be one. First issued in June of 1966, Today, New City publishes a variety of books and 10 issues of New City magazine each year, with award-winning articles on some of today's most challenging topics, whether about the abuse crisis, the economy, ecology, and more. 
New City Magazine readers, friends, and supporters come from various faith, cultural, and political backgrounds. New City gives an avenue for all perspectives to be represented and conveys hope that a real city and community of people could live together in friendship and cooperation. New City highlights the positive impact made by ordinary and extraordinary people who have accepted the challenge of bringing unity into their families, cities, and workplaces. And if you wish to join us in our mission to spread the culture of unity, you can support us by subscribing to New City. It's simple to find us. You can visit our website at newcityph.net. So that's it. That is New City. And if you wish to know more about uh, UCT, please just go and visit the webpage www.uctph.net. I've mentioned a while ago that our speakers this afternoon were the recipients of the New City Achievement Awards. Just a few words to make your to make you understand what is it all about. It is an initiative that New City Press Philippines launched in 2014 as an instrument of unity and dialogue. New City wishes to recognize the unique and great contribution that members of the Focolare movement do in their respective community, in the society, and in the church. By giving the award, New City confirms that their initiative or advocacy is in line with, the very, with its very mission, that is, spreading the culture of unity and dialogue. So, after this comprehensive explanation of what is New City and the Achievement Award, let us now hear from our three distinguished uh, guests, okay? Um, each will be given one and a half minutes to briefly present themselves and say something about how they are bringing ahead their respective advocacy, respective advocacy in this time of pandemic. So we prepared a short video, video clip for each one and we will watch its video before we listen to what they will tell us. Video of Attorney Lisa Miscala Yorda. After the video, Attorney Lisa will say something about herself. to attorney Lisa with her own uh, self presentation. Can we have attorney Lisa now? Yes. Um, good afternoon. And, good afternoon. Um, 
and thank you that you have invited me to this kumustahan and so um um after the award for public service i also received right after the award on the new city so um after that it was in 2014 that i was already assigned in cebu and i was designated as member of the interagency task force where i was in abuse cases also online sexual exploitation cases and cases on ofws who were also abused so I was able to gain experience and it has broadened my experience in handling cases when I was in Cebu because I get into the, um, what you call this, I also am involved in the operation or the rescue operation together with the law enforcement agents while I was in Cebu in 2014 until 2019 of March because in 2019 of March as I was appointed to be the chief of the prosecution office here in Tacloban City. So more or less, it's more on the in the aspect of administration that I am into now. I'm no longer appearing in court, but still, I get, I, I'm still involved in um, cases against women and children. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so on, on this pandemic, uh, I am... Um, also very much active, especially on the street children and the plight of the street children in Tacloban and the plight of the children in conflict with the law. Okay. And also, I also assist women who comes to me for advice and for assistance. Okay, great. Maraming salamat, Attorney Lisa. We will hear more of you, of your advocacy later on, and you will be able to elaborate further what you are into in this time okay thank you very much for that uh, short video thank you very much attorney lisa um for your brief presentation also and now um we will proceed and we will see another video uh that will introduce mr a eric yayan can we have the video now please So we listen now to our um, very own Mr. Eric Yayan, please. Would you like to introduce yourself briefly? Yes, yes, good afternoon, yes. Yes, uh, for some of us, I'm Eric Chan Kaiti Yayan of Puerto Princesa, born in Basilan but raised in Palawan. 
Uh, my father is a Palawenyo and my mother is a uh, Bicolana. <clears throat> All my life is uh, connected in our community simply because uh, I'm so passionate in doing something good every single day. We must be grateful and thank God for giving us uh, a, a day to share our blessings. I firmly believe that uh, God's unending love and protection. We are so happy to receive the New City Award, one of our and we're so grateful. During this time of COVID-19 pandemic, I look, at, I look at it as an opportunity rather than looking in a negative side. Before the start of ECQ, we felt this one before ahead of time. And uh, we took the initiative of uh, giving a subsidy already for our employees. And uh, we are correct. Because of this, we also put ourselves and open our restaurant as a community kitchen kitchen for uh, uh, several frontliners in our, that, can we ha that, that we can handle. Currently, I am uh, very much active in uh, our organization, the Death Together with the Death Evangelical Alliance Foundation. Uh, I'm also an active uh, uh, Philippine Red Cross Palawan chapter, being the chairperson of the Blood Services, uh, Services uh, Committee. And very active, still active in uh, Rotary Club of Puerto Princesa and uh, Puerto Princesa Chamber of Commerce and uh, Palawenyo Information Technology Council. So that's uh, what I'm doing right now. Wow, and dami ah. <laughs> we will get to know more about this, most especially your work for the deaf. No? So yes, we will get to know right. better this action that you are promoting in Puerto Princesa, but also it's, it's getting uh, bigger and bigger, diba? So yes, that's right. Our for sure, our our audience, our live audience, will be very happy to know more about this. But in the meantime, let us view the video clip of that we prepared for our dear Bishop Jerry Alminaza.
Okay, maraming salamat. I hope <laughs> the short video has given us no, uh, a view, at least a bird's eye view of who Bishop Jerry Alminasa, but we would like to listen to him personally to present himself. Bishop Jerry? Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Okay, yeah, magandang okay. hapon po. I'm Bishop Jerry, formerly an ordained priest of the Diocese of Bacolod for 22 years. Before our beloved Pope Benedict the Sixteenth sent me as auxiliary bishop to the Archdiocese of Haro in 2008, five years later, our beloved Pope Francis designated me to the Diocese of San Carlos on the island of Negros as its third bishop. In 2013, when Super Typhoon Yolanda taught us the important lessons on the care of our common home, now contained in his Laudato Si. I am based in San Carlos City, which is recognized by the United Nations as the most one of the most livable cities in the world. And at wow. the same time, I've, I've served the people of Negros, which is being regarded as the renewable energy capital of the Philippines and Southeast Asia, with nine solar power plants, eight biomass plants, and 10 hydropower plants with a combined capacity of 579.43 megawatts. Among our many advocacies together with young people, various groups, various uh, educational background and faith persuasions is for a call-free Negros. And last March 6, 2019, uh, we are very happy that our former Negros Occidental Governor Alfredo Maranion signed his executive order declaring the whole province of Negros Occidental coal free and as a source of clean and renewable energy. We strongly oppose the planned 300 megawatt San Miguel Corporation Global coal fired power plant here in San Carlos City. And just two days ago, I got word from a very reliable, reliable source that this coal-fired power plant won't push through anymore. Wow. So we hope to continue this fight. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Bishop. Napakagandang balita niyan. Uh, uh, we will follow, we will, we will follow, make a follow-up of the activities that you're, uh, that you're doing there in San Carlos City. Maraming salamat po. As I've mentioned earlier to our, that our three distinguished guests will be joined by three energetic youth leaders let us uh, hear from them it will be each will be given a minute to say something about themselves and what they are currently involved in so let's begin with Juke Miranda from uh, the Dumaguete city followed by Chinky from Masbate city and then uh, Gio from Las Piñas so Juke Miranda please hi good afternoon Everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Jups. I'm from my youth of the Focalari movement based here in Magetta City. Uh, thank you for <laughs> inviting me today. Um, I don't know. Um, I've been part of the movement since 2011, where I work directly with New City uh, office in Tagaytay for more than six months and I'm blessed to be in com communication with everyone in the team and the popular for the longest time and part of um, our activities uh, locally and nationally um, right now ever since the pandemic started um, as, a, as a young person and part of a, of, of a business oriented family um, I've always had this, I've been starting this personal advocacy for, for to reconstruct or change our mentality towards so in the usage of social media. So when yeah. UCT reached out to me to help out as a reactor to, to these three distinguished speakers, um, I immediately said my yes. Um, because right now there is no better way to reach out to more people uh, in this during this pandemic and and to touch more lives as much as we can especially with this um, this strict implementation everywhere we go physical social distancing but uh -oh. 
you know, with hopes to not compromise our, you know, our relationships with each other, but um, hopefully to build more on that. Um, so today I, I come as a, as a curious listener um, to maybe exchange some ideas from, from a youth's perspective in this time of uncertainty. And um, you know, to, to reignite hope because even for me, I'm, I'm around 30 years old and um, we are trying, to, uh, trying our best to keep our business running, to provide jobs and to maintain our relationships with our employees and, and clients. So okay. um, thank you for, for, for this afternoon together. Thank you. We will hear more from Jude later on when he gives his own reaction. Okay? We proceed now to Chinky from Asbate City. Thank you very much, Jude. Chinky, are you in? Yes. Hello, okay. Po. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me, Paul. I am Chinky, a Gen 2 from Asbate City. And currently, I am a working in the education sector and elementary kids at day and college students at night. So at this time of pandemic, we, the gentle here in Masbate, initiated the, our COG, Communion of Goods at first, and then it blossomed and we also followed it up with a donation drive. So from the little that we had, um, we managed to create more um, gifts to the most vulnerable part or members of our community. And also for work, since the Deaf Ed is trying so hard then to maintain our education. So um, I am also creating more modules for the kids, especially young unenrolled and those who are still afraid of enrolling their children. Wow. It's a very challenging task. Chinky, we will hear more from, from you later on. Thank you very much, Chinky. We now listen to Gio. Gio is having difficulty with his internet connection, but we hope he can make it. Gio? <laughs> anyway, my name is Gio. I'm from Las Piñas. I'm one of the writers for New City Philippines and also for popularityh.org, which is the official website of the Populari movement here in the Philippines. And since 2018, I've been uh, named as one of the United World Ambassadors for New Humanity International NGO, which represents the Foklari movement in the international scale to official bodies such as the United Nations and UNESCO. That same year, I also served as the main presenter of GenFest 2018 here in Manila. I mainly involved in the Youth Ministry and Social Communications Ministry in our parish serving as coordinator in the parish and vicariate levels and forming part of the diocese. No, I think it was my internet. Again, I will start advocating for faster internet connection after this one. <laughs> yeah, so okay. basically, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Gio. So I said, maraming salamat sa inyong tatlo for your availability and courage to be with our three New City Achievement Awardees. We will hear from more from you later on, okay? The mission of New City and its continuing work to foster unity and dialogue, especially in these challenging times, um, we are faced with a lot of uh, questions. No? Earlier, I mentioned something about uh, the mission, and I would like to read to you a brief description of it, okay, about it. New City Mission Statement, faithful to its commitment to spread the aim of the Focolari movement that all may be one, New City Press Philippines shall continue to promote the culture of unity through its books and the New City magazine. And as a front runner of the Focolari movement in the field of media in the Philippines, it would like to reach out to faithful of various creeds and with people belonging to contemporary culture to establish dialogue. This is the heart of our new city, Komustahan. That we would like to hear from our new city awardees, their respective mission 
to elaborate further what they have already introduced earlier. I am sure we are all excited to listen to each of our distinguished guests. Just an important note, each one will be given seven minutes for their presentation. Here, they will, they will highlight their advocacy related to the respective field of endeavor that bring ahead, especially in, that, are, that they are bringing ahead, especially in this time of pandemic. Its reactor then comes in after the presentation of the new city awardee assigned to him or her. Reaction will be limited to three minutes only, highlighting salient points presented by our new city awardees. So shall we begin? We call, we call on Mr. Eric Jan Yayen to present and elaborate further what he has already mentioned earlier. Okay, Mr. Good afternoon, Eric Yayen. Again, everyone. Good afternoon. <clears throat> you know, uh, business and self-respect is uh, two things that needs to be in one person, especially being an entrepreneur. Respect is earned of what we do in life. My connection with deaf community or persons with special needs started since 2009. And we only achieved our success, not really 100%, through the partnership with Deaf Evangelical Alliance Foundation headed by uh, Happy to pay CEO, Dr. Cecilio Pedro, through each uh, local chapter directress, Ms. Sara Santa Ana. And we collaborate also with Department of Education through the special education classes in uh, elementary and high school. And uh, to make it more uh, viable or make it more productive, we strongly collaborate with the local government units through the uh, social welfare development. So this is our, uh, what we really best to succeed in any kind of advocacy. Our advocacy of reaching out with the deaf is something that needs, I think, to be addressed by each municipality, province, and the national government. I may say that because uh, a lot of uh, them is coming from the rural areas. During this time of pandemic, what we have done to our deaf employees is just continuously monitoring their situation, uh, making sure that they're all taken care of. Communication is only available only to messenger video conferencing because we need to use the sign language to, to reach them. And uh, we also uh, set up a chat group so that everybody is uh, available for any given time or any things that happens to them. But others are connected to text. I think we are, we are uh, 60 or 80 percent prepared to this kind of situation. Years, a few years back, we conducted uh, capacity building sessions to address some issues of, uh, of our employing with persons with disabilities. We created a space for acquiring new learnings. We sharpened knowledge and skills and specific in, in specific areas of work like in the kitchen like uh, in the office uh, and many things uh, maintenance with focus on enhancing work performance through effective team cooperation and improved communication this is the biggest hindrance in our daily life with a person with disabilities communication uh, and also, uh, we encourage personal reflection, uh, cultivate uh, personal relationship, and the most important is we practice the value of malasakit sa bawat isa. Malasakit sa bawat uh, uh, pamayanan, malasakit sa 
ating mga customer, malasakit sa ating uh, environment, higit sa lahat malasakit sa bawat isang may mga taong may kapansanan. Unity in work is a strong foundation of camaraderie. Really works for everyone. Another lessons that uh, are effective in this kind of pandemic. Uh, three years ago, we started <coughs> uh, asking our employees, especially the PWDs, to save money. 30, 40, 50 pesos, if they like 100 pesos a day, out of their own. This is a, a money that is that it belongs to them. It's uh, we call it peso for my future. Because last time we went to maybe uh, four years ago, we went to Hong Kong. We saved money for a whole year. Then we went to Hong Kong, and we're so lucky because uh, in Hong Kong there's a Tokolari center that uh, really uh, helps us to go around. <laughs> Uh, with 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 my you know, with my deaf employees, and this is really something that gives them an inspiration to introduce them to the outside outside world. First time they go, they went to Manila. First time to go abroad. So this is something that we really try to to give them uh, uh, an opportunity to see the other parts of the world or other parts of experience. Surely, there's no permanent in life. Business, material things, even our daily routine. Only God is permanent. Our dependable foundation. God speaks to individual to push them to share. I don't know. There's one. Uh, I'd like to uh, share this uh, moment with you and to everybody. Uh, when this pandemic, everybody, I think, we think that business will collapse. Nobody will help us. I remember it, it was one of, uh, one of the frustrating days that I'm thinking, what we will do? What we will do? Uh, we have to close the business. And one, uh, one afternoon, there's a call from a friend from Pocolare and said, Eric, how are you? Uh, let me know uh, how to reach you, how to help you. You know, uh, I was really thankful and tears from my eyes. God sent these people or send this person to say something to be strong, to be really, to be, to be faithful in God that everything will be okay. And this person, I'd like to name them because uh, uh, they are both our friends, Francis and Tess, thank you very much. Uh, to, just to let you know, your thoughtfulness is truly one inspiration to us uh, as a business and to all, my, to all my employees that, oh, don't worry. There's other people who wants to help us. We will need, our, we will need their help later on maybe <laughs> as long as you know trusting god yeah, yeah, yeah. so before i uh, before i end i'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for praying for us for praying for each and everyone uh, our connection in the spirit of prayers rome thank you for this kumustahan 2020 that leaves us uh, unity is really god thank you Okay, maraming salamat Eric ha, talagang very very touching, no? <laughs> Yung mga kinwento mo sa amin. For sure, uh, iba sa ating mga um, listeners or viewers, live viewers would like to ask you something, but we will we will tell them to write their questions and uh, either sa Zoom room or sa Facebook comment section to write their questions. We now listen to Jukes. Hi. Um, thank you, K. Eric, for uh, for this beautiful sharing. No, I think um, uh, our family is also running our own business, and uh, when we were forced to close down temporarily um, the whole month or during the lockdown, um, was was really every day was 
you know, you, can we still open? Do we, um, do we still have the market that could, you know, that could continue, help, help us continue the, the business? So hearing Korea X experience, you know, I, of course I've read up of, um, about his story and his business, and I even looked up TripAdvisor <laughs> for for Kai Nato Pinato. <laughs> you can see that all. Of, so it's a very popular place in Puerto Princesa, and I think um, very few restaurants, or business, restaurant owners, have this kind of dedication for 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 their employees. You know, to literally to take care of your employees, so that your employees will take care of your clients. And in this case, um, it's taken to a more supernatural level, wherein it gives people a uh, you know, um, it gives them this this sense of self-respect. It gives them you know, um, their own purpose in their lives, rather than going out in communities and even in their own families where uh, where they are discriminated. It's it's very common. I think I don't know if if in the Philippine context, but um, usually uh, with people I know, we we have the tendency then tendency to to assume that. These these people, deaf and the mute, in this in this moment, um, are incapable of, of working and building a, a future for themselves. Because I think for everyone else, um, um, for PWDs, deaf and mutes, um, right now there's the Black Lives Matter movement. I think it's a very sensitive topic, you know. So so. Um, to give the self-respect, to give them value in their lives and in the work that they do, um, to help them um, get off this dependency towards their other people, you know, they move ahead in their lives and, and see and see meaning meaning in their work and what they do. So I think it helps me as a young person, you know, in this time of uncertainty, to, to reevaluate, I guess, to rediscover the value of 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 our core workers, our employees, and our friends as well, when we did this and um, reached out to you guys. Um, there is um, no better time to improve our communication in each other. And I think social media helps us uh, in this way. And I think we should remove the stigma that the generation, our, and our my generation and the younger generation are influenced negatively because of this, of this medium, and I think through things like this, you know, to share experiences, to reach out to other people, people we have communication with, um, to share these types of experiences like like Kuya Eric's, I think it's such an impression not just only for us as business owners, but also to to aspiring entrepreneurs, to, yes, yes. to young people who are still in college or struggling to know. We don't even know if they can go to school or not within the next few months. But I think this is also part of their education. And if they cannot get the education they need in, in, in university or in high school, or whatever, they can get it from here. And um, we have to take advantage of that. So there is no better time to really um, use our tools. And, and if these tools mean sometimes our iPads, our, our cell phones, our laptops, we have to make the most out of it. Okay. And, um, Thank you, Kuya Eric, for your experience, Talaga. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jukes, for this profound communion you made and your impression on, on what Eric uh, said. No? <clears throat> we shall now proceed to our second New City Awardee, Attorney Lisa Jordan. Can we hear her? Yes, yes, Romy, I'm here. Okay. Thank you very much. You now have your seven so, minutes. Yes, I have time. Okay. So, just I have said um, a while ago that I was in Cebu in 2014 after I received my award, New City Award, and eventually I was um, designated member of the Interagency Task Force on Human Trafficking, so where I get to involve myself in cases of abused women and children, trafficked women, Traffic OFWs, etc. Um, and Lisa, so it was in Cebu that Lisa, I had... uh, will, yes? you be, will you be able to open your yes. video? 
Okay. Uh-uh. Attorney Lisa, it's okay. You can you can speak with your audio even if with, without a video. Perhaps your connection is a little um, disturbed. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay now. Okay. Uh, okay. To continue, it was I said it was in Cebu that I get to see a lot of you know. Um, violations of children, no? especially sexual, especially because I also go with the law enforcement to operation. We conduct operation, uh, I mean, rescue operation. So I have a lot of um, harm experiences actually. And then, but this helped me open my, this opened to a lot of, you know, also um, ways in which I can, I can, uh, improve my my skill in prosecuting cases involving human trafficking and online sexual exploitation. So, but then that chapter of my life has ended and I was appointed here in Tacloban as the head of the prosecution service. So, my more, it's more an administrative aspect. I manage the prosecutors and also the staff and other administrative matters, you know. And I also approve resolved cases of my prosecutors but it does not um, stop me from my advocacy on child on women and children you know i believe that um god placed me there and so also clients that come my way i i see that as people that god sent to uh, are sending to me god sent to me so that i can help them or ass assist them when i arrived in tacloban i in 2019 and assume office as city prosecutor I get to connect with the social workers they were my friends when I was still in was still in Tacloban in 2005 so I, I tried to connect with them and there I learned about the street children the plight of the street children in Tacloban and so for me it was like a call to do something about it okay are you in Okay, um, perhaps we can call later, na, na wala si Atty. Lisa. We can, we can call later also together with, uh, with Chinky later on also. Uh, we, will, we will call again Atty. Lisa later on to continue what she is presenting. Because it's something very interesting, no? Uh, we cannot lose her. <laughs> we cannot uh, lose the fact that, uh, that she is sharing something very important regarding her advocacy. So. Um, at this time, we can we can proceed with our very own dear Bishop Jerry Alminaza. Bishop Jerry, can we yes. hear you? Okay. It, yes, I met our ideal together with the the rest of the gen when I was a teenager in 1975 before I entered the seminary, and this has really marked a very strong impact in my life until now. No especially putting God before even the priesthood and really loving Jesus in every neighbor, in every present moment, but especially choosing this God who chose to die on the cross, uh, who really suffered even the abandonment on the cross. And so up to now, even this advocacy for caring for the environment has been uh, motivated by this constant search for this space of Jesus forsaken in, in everyone and in everything, even in creation, in what God has created. Um, what in particular about Negros, in 1875, the forest cover of Negros is 95%. And sadly, it has fallen to only less than 4% today. From 95% forest cover to less than 4% today. Imagine the great biodiversity loss over these years. No? Worldwide, every day, according to the United Nations Environment Program in 2010, almost 200 species go extinct 1,000 times higher than the 
natural one because of climate change. And I wonder how many of us really feel the strong need for a requiem for these losses, to really mourn for these losses. Whenever there is a typhoon, an earthquake, a fire, or any calamity, what is reported are the number of human lives lost and the damages to property. But seldom, if at all, do we account for the losses in terms of the other human and plant species no? that are also damaged or that have disappeared because of this. Less than 4% left of our natural forest here in Negros. And yet our leaders in the past until the present still allow the failed geothermal project in Mount Kanlao Natural Park, which is a, a natural reserve park. Should, should, should not do something there, no, inside the park. And the existing illegal structures and even the proposed construction of concrete roads in the Northern Negros Natural Park, or NNNP. So part of our care for our environment is to really protect this less than 4% forest or natural reserve park. Um, also, another phase of Jesus forsaken here for me in Negros is 97% uh, of the energy that Negros produces comes actually from renewable sources that bring little or no harm to the environment, to the climate. 97% can be broken down into 48% solar, 36% geothermal, 13% biomass. There is also hydro, but it's only 0.9, so it's almost 0%. So that's 97%. Only 3% coming from diesel. But ironically, however, here in Negros, we buy the five electric cooperatives, or cooperatives or the distribution utilities are buying 70% of our electricity from dirty coal and diesel power plants in our neighboring islands of Cebu and Iloilo. 64% from coal-fired power plants and 6% from diesel power plants. So imagine, um, in, uh, in Negros, you know, um, we need to really pay attention to anything that people might try to do just to gain profit, but without regard for the environment. So proactively inspired by Laudato Si, we, the four dioceses of Bacolod, Dumaguete, Cabangalan, and San Carlos, present here in Negros Island, witnessing to the Church of the We, or a synodal church, we want to act together in a collaborative manner so that coal or any fossil fuel power plant may not be necessary anymore in Negros, and so we can keep Negros 100% uh, based on renewable energy, an RE, 100% RE island. So um, we, are, we are working towards this, that collectively, you know, the four dioceses will be able to more or less produce a renewable energy using only the rooftops of our houses, our convents, our schools, our churches, uh, using only those rooftops, uh, using the distributed energy paradigm, we can produce 260 megawatts. You know that uh, with the 260 megawatt solar rooftop, we'll be able to avoid 250 million carbon dioxide a year. So that would be saving uh, our environment a lot, no? And we, there will be no CO2 uh, emission because of that. You know, in, in Negros, the peak demand actually 
of energy is 349 megawatts. But we have a dependable capacity of 570.4 megawatts. Our installed capacity actually is 682.9. And we are on, but, uh, and then if we add, the four dioceses will contribute to 206, 260 megawatts. Then uh, uh, there's no need for a coal power power plant here. Yes. That's why it was really good news that uh, because of the COVID and because of the strong opposition from the ground, they have decided to not to push through with the coal-fired power plant here in uh, San Carlos, but instead they are trying to move towards natural gas. But anyway, wow. I have used up my seven uh, minutes. There are other <laughs> advocacies related to environment, like against black sand mining, you know, and all this stuff. But uh, for, for the moment, uh, let me stop here so that others can okay. also share. Okay, marami salamat po Bishop. That's a very uh, inspiring, enlightening uh, presentation, no? Yung sa advocacy niyo. We really hope that it will continue this plan yeah. to really eradicate this coal power plant, no? And uh, we now listen to the reactor of the uh, of Bishop Jerry Gio. Are you there? <laughs> Yes, hello. Okay, let's can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was really nervous to be, you uh, to be reacting to <laughs> to Bishop Jerry. Uh, Romain knows that very well, and uh, my fellow reactors. So I was very struck with uh, what Bishop Jerry said when he said that at a young age when he met the ideal, he fell in love with it, and it brought a huge impact, a lasting impact. Uh, in his life and how um, a key point of the spiritual unity, which is Jesus forsaken, has pushed him to really care for creation. I was really struck that also by uh, the facts that Bishop Jerry stated, like for example, imagine from 95% to, to less than 4% of the forest covers uh, that decrease that very... Um, it's very obvious the decrease from 95% to 4%, and that's very alarming. Um, in the next year, if we don't take care of the environment, we might be seeing less than 1%, and that's, that's really dangerous, no? Um, that care for the environment is really important. As a matter of fact, for us young people, it's one of the priorities, no? You can see uh, youth organizations, schools, really um, organizing different activities, to care for the environment and in fact we have one figure in the international sphere in the person of Greta Thunberg who is, who is really vocal who has come out um, really to speak of the need to prioritize the planet I think that's that's a thing that we have to if there's a motto that I can take from Bishop Jerry Strang that to make our planet a priority and um, it's just if we cannot just um, say that it's an advocacy because you are called, you know, as a Christian, you are called because in creation God manifests Himself. And also, there is an important need to really revisit our role in in the environment, in the story of creation, that we are meant to be stewards of creation, not to be masters of creation. So, um, having that cleared out helps us understand that we are we cannot just exploit. Uh, the environment or destroy uh, natural resources. And uh, I, I was really, again, uh, what Bishop Jerry is doing, really thank you, Bishop Jerry, for all um, that you are doing. You are doing great uh, for the environment, in, especially in that part of, of Negros. Um, I think that it's also essential that we, because you were saying at a certain point that when you started voicing out your opposition to these things, they have uh, influenced, uh, in a way, the pub the action. No? So I think that's very important that we, we value um, hearing the opinion of different people of different sectors so that the, the conclusion, the decision that we will arrive to comes from the different perspectives and we create uh, an understanding. You know? We have... Uh, and well-informed decision uh, being made. And I think that uh, 
the church has really taken interest with Pope Francis on the lead, especially with the Laudato Si that uh, Bishop Jerry also mentioned. And um, in the diocesan level, we could already see that there is a ministry for ecology. It's something um, which has uh, going, been going on uh, for the past years. And how we hope that in the parish level, every parish will have this ministry on ecology that really focuses uh, to promote care for the environment, to care for our common home. No? We have to understand that the work for the environment is not just because we want to work for the environment, but it's because it's where, where we are right now, it's habitat. No? So imagine if we won't take care for the environment now, for the planet now, there won't be any planet to live anymore yeah. for in the coming days. So we're talking about uh, our taking care also as we owe it to the future generation. And I think this is a very beautiful contribution. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much, Shio, for that uh, very <laughs> rich intervention, for a very rich reaction. We would like to thank you for that. Uh, shall we continue with Attorney Lisa from the point where she, where she left? Are you still in, Attorney Lisa? She's having difficulty uh, a while ago to enter again. Uh -uh. But in any case, uh, when Attorney Lisa will be able to get in, we will ask her to continue her presentation. In the meantime, perhaps we can. In the meantime, perhaps we can listen to our reactor, <laughs> even if uh, uh, the guest speaker has to finish yet. We ask um, Chinky because yes. Chinky was able to. Chinky was able to read also the profile of uh, Attorney Lisa. Would you like to say something, Chinky? Yes, Chow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was able to read also the profile of Attorney Lisa, and actually, I'm still in awe of her bravery because not everyone has the courage to actually go after the violators or go after um the, the advocacy against violations on women and children. So. Um, with what she um, made mention earlier, that we also know that some of the women, some of also of the children, actually do not do not know that they're they're still being abused. That they are already being abused. And when Attorney Lisa told that uh, she is already out of the uh, of that zone, she's already in the administration but it does not stop her from advocating the against human traffic and, and violations no? and what strikes me the most was for how we how the youth in these trying times mostly or often complains about boredom and everything where there are three children according to attorney lisa who is suffering you know, this pandemic actually created somewhat a magnifying glass that focuses significantly on the sufferings of our women and three children also um news and statistics also show that the domestic violence against women and children rises also in this time of pandemic so as youth and also as part of the focular and the gen and the commission on youth ministry we should also try to to um, go out of our comfort zone and think out of the box, and let's not um, be complacent how how we are actually um, the comfort of our home because there are street children, there are women that are being abused, and there are um, hungry stomachs that are in need of our help even in our little way. Wow, thank you very much, Chinky, for that very nicely worded intervention, reaction regarding Attorney Lisa. Um, Attorney Lisa, are you in now? Unfortunately, we cannot continue with Attorney Lisa because of the connection uh, with her internet, but I think um, she was able also to communicate no, the, very, the, the very essence of what she's doing, her advocacy. Um, against the violation for women of women and children and now she is also in uh you know taking care of 
uh, of the of the child, three children in Tacloban. So we are happy with that. And um, yeah, we we arrived to this uh, to this moment of um, you know question and answer. <laughs> no, it was a very inspiring presentation with our three awardees and then our also our um, reactors. No, they are really very inspiring. I'm sure many of our live audience are waiting for a moment for this moment when they can address some questions to our awardees. We shall gather your questions that are in the dialogue portal of the Zoom and in the comment section of the Facebook. But while we are gathering these questions, we will ask our three reactors to address their questions to our new city awardees. Each one will be given time, one question to address the person uh, they would like to address. Shall we begin with um, Jukes? Would you like to address any question to Mr. Eric Kayan? Hello, hi. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, I think Tita Jenny also asked her question here, just to echo her, no? Like, um, like uh, what, Kuya Eric, what have you been, how have you responded? How has the community there responded to this pandemic? No, not just the kind of talk, but also like, um, was there like a new discovery or a rediscovery of of Kainito and your co-worker co-workers and employees? Like, um, uh, yeah, that. Thank the question you, here. Yeah, thank you for uh -huh. that question. I read also the comment of Jenny. Actually. Uh, in this time of pandemic, uh, we, uh, some of our workers, because uh, we tried to really uh, up, uh, upscale their uh, skills, like we have now in off, an office worker, we have now an uh, assistant cook that helps in the kitchen, and we have also a griller that really works, you know. So that's why uh we are trying to to put them uh in a basis of uh, they can work because uh, uh we did not lack, uh we did not stop uh, working we work as a community kitchen for other frontliner and uh we also uh discover some of the the skills of other other members of our deaf uh, employees like we have uh that is, that's a good in uh, massage. Now we are going to gardening also. Uh, we also conducted sessions uh, uh, like uh, noodle making, uh, uh, can in can uh, wood sculpture. So a lot of a lot of things that uh, you know are, are are really coming up with the skills of other uh, PWDs and hopefully. Uh, we can continue working with our community, doing uh, little things. And uh, my assurance to our deaf community that we will still continue uh, doing their work uh, at least uh, twice a week in, you know, in the restaurant, you know, something to do. But uh, we have, uh, we have uh, I think we have seven or eight uh, uh, deaf are still working out of... Uh, 32, but uh, uh, I hope we we continue uh, sharing uh, some ideas. You know, giving them uh, jobs like uh, they go into uh, organic gardening, and we still buy their we yes. still buy their oh. vegetables and something like that. Very nice. So I hope uh, with this uh, pandemic, we continue to discover our skills, our our ability to. To change the mindset, you know. Yeah. Uh, continue to to take the challenges of our time to the new normal. <laughs> okay. Uh -uh. Very okay. nice. No, we can we can really see how much this love that creates and recreates in a situation like this that we are in now. No, it is it is the love that that is capable of recreating the atmosphere, the environment, even di diversifying not only from cooking, but also going towards something else for the benefit of those who are in need, definitely. Thank you very much for that uh, 
beautiful answer. We now call on Gio, if you have a question to address the Bishop, Jerry. Hello, can you yes, hear me? Gio. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. okay. Yeah, um, no, my question is, um, because this coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 pandemic has resulted us to be placed uh, under restrictions. Our movements are restricted. And a few days after that, we noticed how uh, the environment was so clear, you know, um, the smog wasn't around. In fact, uh, the, the Venice Canal in Italy, for example, was very clear, you know, the water is there. And also here for us in Metro Manila, from Quezon City, one can see Mount Samat, the, the cross there, which is quite far and wasn't usually seen before. Now, because smog's cleared up, um, it's very visible. Question now is for Bishop Jerry, how, with that um, realization from people, how can we actually convince them to, to move from that feeling of just, wow, let's be concerned the environment, to actually move, to start, you know, to realize, to concretize what they are feeling for the environment, their, their concern for our common home, starting in our very own home and maybe also in the parish level, which is um, the newest the local community setup. Okay. Bishop thank Perry? you, J.O. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, Bishop. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Bishop. You know, the, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is really calling for an ecological conversion. No? One problem really with the, the with the disregard for our common home is that people don't recognize God anymore. It's like what Pope Benedict XVI said, the spiritual desertification, no? Uh, we don't, because of the technology, we don't feel the need for God. And so now we are now forced by the pandemic to realize that even how, how strong is our armory or our, you know, defense, uh, I don't know how you call this, defense uh, unit, you know, you cannot even, uh, cannot even attack this uh, invisible enemy called coronavirus, no? So that it really forced us to, to our knees and to humbly recognize we need, we need God, we need a higher power bigger than us. And so this is precisely what I'm hoping for, that people begin to see and, uh, and really, again, uh, discover God who is love, a God who is beyond, behind everything that is happening in the world, uh, in spite of the suffering, in, in spite of uh, the negativities, there is still a force behind this that sustains this world. You know, and we need to discover him and hopefully choose him, choose this God. Because once God is in the heart, the, the rest will follow, no? But if yeah. God is not in the heart, it's difficult to convince people to be caring about anyone and everyone and everything, you know. Uh, I hope the pandemic has realized us this important uh, message that Kiara also is in the midst of the bombings. Uh, in this, in our time, it is really the coronavirus, you know, that uh, left and right people see people falling, dying, and that, uh, you know, uh, we can only but go to God and God alone. So I don't know if that answers the question, yes. but that's my inspiration. <laughs> wow. Maraming salamat po, Bishop, kasi maganda yung sinabi ninyo, no? the, that the Pope is calling us for an ecological conversion. <laughs> it's a conversion of our attitude towards our common home. No? So marami salamat po for that. May we ask uh, Chinky if she has a question to Attorney Lisa? And if Attorney Lisa will be able to connect again? Can you hear me, Rome? I'm here. Yes, now it's clear. Now it's okay. clear. Attorney Lisa, yes. Okay. Would you would you like to instead to answer a question addressed to you by Chinky? Okay, yes, sure. Okay. Chinky, can you address Attorney Lisa your question, please? Good afternoon, Attorney Lisa. Uh, okay. 
um, the law on violence against women and children in the anti trafficking law yes. was passed a couple of years ago, but still, the yes. issue still dominates until today. Po. And I believe that it, the, the number of the women or children that are being abused is rising. So, um, in this trying times, in this pandemic, how do we address or or if not prevent, how do we address the abuses or the violations that kept on happening amid this virus? Okay. Yes, Attorney Lisa. Okay, so um, it's a reality, no, that there's really difficulty because, um, however, there are also positive. Um, things coming out, like for example, the, the court just convicted a, a pedophile, even during the pandemic, there was a virtual, what do you call this, hearing in court. And also there were also operations, I know because I follow our chat group, there were also operations conducted on against perpetrators on sexual exploitation online. And then... Um, for me, like, for example, I do not have to go far and for these abused men. Sometimes God will put me, will put them before me and it will not, I will not go far. It's the, actually, I just helped someone, uh, the daughter of the caregiver of my father. When I learned that um, he has, she has a live-in partner and she is being abused by this live-in partner. And then um, I also, I also, um, learn that most of the sisters are sleeping beside this live-in partner, the sisters of this daughter of my, of the, my papa's caregiver. So immediately I, I act on it and help her, assisted her, uh, brought her to the police station, to the clinic, etc. And I really journeyed with her in the process, what, what to do, no? so that she could get a temporary protection order. And so we were successful and she was able to get that protection or and uh, the, the, the guy is no longer with them. So um, for me, God will just place me in the right situation and in the right place. And that is yeah. how, you know, I, I try to do the will, you know. Um, one woman, one victim at a time. Yeah. Yeah, one woman, one victim <laughs> at a time. Live, you, you may be saying no, that we live each present moment well, it, it, even in your work as a prosecutor, you know, as a defender of, uh, of those vulnerable to abuse. Marani Salamat, Attorney Lisa. Uh, uh, that's a very um, beautiful uh, and talagang <laughs> filled with passion. No? The work that you're really doing, we really appreciate it very much. Pero unfortunately, uh, we do not have any more time no we don't have any more time it's already five o'clock and uh, i know many many of us uh, have also commitments after this one no and we can continue but time is what it is no and but we would like to assure you that uh, we will gather the questions that you that you posted in our in our in our question box in our chat and uh, we will send them to to our uh, uct awardees and we hope they will be able to find time to reply and we will send them to those who have asked so please if you would like to uh, leave your question just uh, also with your your name, especially those who are in the Facebook, no? we, will, we will get them and we will gather them and we will address them to our New City awardees. No? And so that they will be able to, uh, to answer. We are now in this, in this last moment and unfortunately we, uh, we run out of time. But before, before that, we would like to ask the last words from our three New City Award is beginning with uh, Eric. Would you like to say your last word? Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you for this opportunity. And would like to just to say that the movement is also my strongest inspiration in life. Uh, living a life of gratefulness every single day uh, really works for me. And uh, thank you, everyone, and thank you 
I'm inviting you after the COVID. Uh, I'm inviting <laughs> everyone to come to Puerto Princesa. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now we listen to, we hear Attorney Lisa with her last words. Attorney Lisa. Ah, uh, nawala na naman. Nawala na naman si Attorney Lisa. Uh -uh. In any case, we hear from Bishop Jerry. Bishop Jerry, please. Your last words. Yes. Yes, uh, please take time to read Laudato Si if you, are, you can do it. Then also I would like to campaign for divestment from coal. You know, try to see if your banks are investing on coal and tell them not to use our money for, for activities like uh, investing on coal-fired power plants, no? Divestment uh, campaign. I stand by my strong conviction that it is a human right to live in a clean, healthy and safe environment and that we need to see the world, the universe as a caress of God, as a precious sacred book that he has written and it is good news. We have to show it as good news and I hope that we will, fo will follow this uh, hierarchy, no? Planet, persons, and then uh, profit. Huli mo na yung profit, no? And sana nga, uh, we will be able to really love not just our neighbor, but, but everyone and everything that God created. No, we find ourselves within this beautiful family of God, including the rest of God's creation. So I will end with this Indian proverb that says, we do not follow, we, not, we do not borrow the world from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. So we owe it to the next generation that we care so much for this world. But of course, for us who love God, it should really show our love for God in the way we care for our universe, our common home. Thank you so much. Wow. Maraming salamat po, Bishop, with that wonderful last word that you have. We do not, we borrow this world from, our, from the future generation. We really have to take care and so that we can give them the best that we can give of our uh, of our planet. No? Now we listen with the last words of our reactors. Shall we begin with our uh, with Jukes, please? Hi. Um, I, um, I would just like to thank again our speakers for this afternoon. And for me it's just a great inspiration because even though it they address specific um, sectors of society, you know, from commerce to human rights advocacy and the environment. I think uh, it applies to every industry and all, all levels of society. So, so for me as a young person, maybe um, to apply what I've learned today in, in my daily life at work, in our yeah. business environment, and share as much as I can these experiences because there's like bits and pieces where I could share, especially um, even Bishop Jerry's experience is something that is truly wonderful because uh, there's always this um, you know, prejudice towards the Catholic Church about addressing current social issues, especially the environment. So, so to see um, someone at the head of, 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 of our of the Catholic Church um, being at the forefront in, in bringing change, mm -hmm. actual change is almost dangerous, yeah, yeah. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so really props, props to our speakers today. Thank you so much Thank for you. inspiring us, for educating us, and we'll share the video to as much people, to much young people as we can. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joe. We we shall move to uh, to the last word of Chinky, perhaps. Chinky, are you in? Um, um, first, I'd like um, to thank everyone po for having in this very special moment. And um, perhaps after the, um, with, um, hearing all the diverse advocacy of our speakers, po, I'd like to leave concretely the, the commitment everyone made to the gospel to actually live the present and go out 
go beyond our borders to help those most vulnerable in you know less fortunate neighbors also it's i am really um, the topic bishop jerry had mentioned is really relatable in our city because our province is actually investing in the coal power plant whatsoever and then the our city cannot actually maneuver directly into the stop, stoppage of the power plant and then our Meralco counterpart here in Masbate City is kept on I know parang shutting the power so that perhaps we could support the <laughs> coal powered plant in the province. But since I believe it's done there and we can do it also here. Okay. Maraming salamat, Chinky. Oo, maraming salamat uh, sa inyong tatlo. Uh, no, we still have Gio. Gio? <laughs> Gusto mong humabot? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Akala ko makakatakas na ako. Eh. I, I was about to greet uh, properly. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Uh, really thank you to Dr. Nilisa, to Kuya Eric Yayen, to Bishop, especially to Bishop Jerry, who I had the chance of... Um, reacting to and uh, asking question all the all these awardees um achievements in life uh talagang reflects how the spirituality of unity uh is a response helps us to respond to the pressing needs and challenges of today's society and i hope that we young people can live to that expectation that uh, you have set the bar high so really thank you Thank you for this uh, wonderful moment of kamustahan, of dialogue, and uh, let's continue. Let's continue to work for not only for a more united world, but for a better world. Thank you. Wow, very good. Thank you very much, Gio. You summarize the <laughs> the words that we would like to express. Also, thank you very much for that. Ang bilis ng ang bilis lumipat ng oras, ano? Before we did goodbye, allow me to, to say in behalf of the New City Press Philippines and the responsibles of the Focolare Movement in the Philippines, we say heartfelt thanks to our guests. <laughs> this has been an hour that we will treasure. Dito rin kami kukuha ng hugot para sa pang-araw-araw namin na adventure ngayong panahon ng pandemia. You have inspired us all, for sure, each one of us can say to each one of you our heartfelt, heartfelt thanks. To our reactors, maraming salamat sa inyo. Hanggang sa susunod, ha? Huwag kayong magsasawang samahan ng New City sa kanyang misyon na ipalaganap ang kultura ng pagkakaisa at dialogo. At the end, we want to thank also the New City friends inside the Zoom room and those who followed the Kumustahan via FB Live. No? And last na talaga, here, I would like to personally mention Economy of Communion Commission no? who have come to our aid in these difficult times. As uh, also Eric mentioned, our heartfelt gratitude for, for your concrete love, EOC. We will not forget also our generous supporters and partners, Banco Kabayan, APSE, Pocolare Carpentry, Kainato, and Kalayaan Engineering. And of course, a special thanks to Nico Yumul, who is working so hard at, as our technical support for this program. So it's one of you. Thank you very much for this wonderful moment. And for sure, magkakaroon ng second edition. <laughs> ang kumustahan na to kasi ang oras talagang napakabilis. And I would like to bring to you also what uh, uh, Attorney Lisa was mentioning. I am really sorry but i assured her that truly with her difficulty in connecting with the internet um she has contributed a lot so that this of course with her love for jesus on the cross has contributed a lot also for this uh, wonderful moment that we have together okay so maraming maraming salamat sa bawat isa sa inyo see you again okay see you again well, we will make a group photo right now Okay, please open your videos. A... Open your videos, please. That's it. Okay. Okay. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three.
Okay. Thank you. One more, one more, one more page. Like, one more, okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, good, okay. thanks. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank